What is up guys, today we're going to open up these two Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons here and we're going to tear this down, disassemble this all and rehouse the shell of this and I've got these two new purple transparent shells which would look nice instead of the uh, standard grey that you see here uh, this is provided by Z Labs com and they do different colors you can also get chromed out ones and a lot of different uh, transparent colored ones but I've gone for the purple here so what you need to open the switch joy cons is a tri point screwdriver which is the Y00 Phillips double zero some opening picks sponger and that's about it. You don't really need anything else. I've got some tweezers here just to um, get into those really small ribbon cables. So we're going to open the left controller, or Joy Con controller first. And there's four tri point screws along the bottom of the back housing here. So we just need to open these up. Right, you want to keep your screws to a side. I'm using a magnetic mat here just to keep them together. So once that's open, you can use a sponger or your pick and just pry this back cover open. And just be careful with the two ribbon cables here. These are your connection, wireless connection uh, and sync button so you don't want to ruin these. So the battery comes out next. It's not stuck on with adhesive or anything. You can just pop this open. This comes out and this is connected here. So this just pops out like a little Lego piece but just be careful because everything is minuscule and you can easily break something if you use too much force Battery pops out like that. All right, there are three screws here that connect the battery cover, so we're going to take that off. Now unscrew them. Pop the cover off, this should just come off just like that. I'm going to unlatch this little tab here, and this is for the trigger button. So now the middle housing is off, and then pop the um, SR and SL buttons, the sync. Now 
now that's off just watch out when you take out the ribbon cables here that these latches open up on opposite sides so just be careful not to damage any of these so now that the rail is off or well this the back plate I'm just going to take the sink and rail off there's only one screw connecting that and then the little latch button here to detach your Joy-Con pop this here and we can actually just assemble this at the back right now this should just go in one way you just have to line it up And then let's screw this on as well. Right, so now this is the tricky part, is getting this off the trigger button. So what we have to do is find these little plastic pins at the back here. That's holding the trigger in place. It's really hard to see because it's just fit on so well. Like you have to kind of unclip it to loosen up the, the trigger button and then it should just come out but there are two springs that are in place where the triggers are which you should try not to lose while doing this process Alright, so I managed to get this off. It popped off with the two springs and two latches that you have to decompress, which are they clip on here. So you kind of you need to use a little bit of force just to pop these out, but try not to break any of these little plastic picks here. So now all that's left is the trigger button connection here. We're gonna unscrew this. Take the little circuit board out, I think this is stuck on slightly I'm just gonna put it in here into our replacement housing
There we go, that is now on. We could probably put the trigger button in now. We have to be very careful not to lose any of these springs here. This is probably one of the trickiest parts right now. All right, so you want to align the springs in place. Grab your trigger button and you'll see there's two two little supports where the springs go into so we're going to have to line these up and press it in so it clicks in and the trigger button should function normally but you've got to make sure you do it right because you have to gonna open this up again this kind of goes in an angle as well Alright, so I managed to do it. I just lined it up on the left side, matching the two um, supports where the springs go, and then I lined up where the clips were, left side, and then it kind of just popped in. So that is now successfully on. Alright, next we're going to take off the joystick here. So there's only supported by two screws diagonally from each other. Um, we need to pop this ribbon cable off. So we can get to the screw. Next we just need to take this ribbon cable off for the analog stick. Once the screws are off, just pop this ribbon cable out that connects the analog stick. There's, there's that off and the bit of conductive foam that I needed to put on here because this one had connectivity issues. Right, we want to take off these top three screws here and this basically are for the, the top buttons. Let's just take this screw off. And this just pops out like that. Yeah. 
and just be careful when you take off one of the hole buttons here because this also has a little spring here that you don't want to lose buttons should just come out just like so which will then remain the motherboard here that we need to take off okay so there's only two screws now holding the motherboard in place we can remove them The motherboard should just pop out and then there is the vibration HD rumble here you can disconnect this but you're gonna have to solder them back on I mean it's just easier just to pry this open this is stuck down with adhesive you'll hear it unstick just like so and then this whole thing the motherboard and the vibration just pops out just like that just be careful with these um, connections here place that to a side now let's just remove all the buttons and the cushions for the buttons now there is this like protective thing for the analog I'm gonna take this off as you can see there and then place it in the other one So that's everything off on the Joy-Con. We can now start putting everything back together into the new um, replacement one. So these were just directional buttons. We can just put these in like so. As you can see here, I've put all the buttons back, the screenshot button, and I've also put this little rubber washer type thing for the analog. We can now put the motherboard back in with its HD rumble. Okay, so the motherboard's back in place and I've screwed these two screws in but make sure you don't do them too tight and before you do, check that your buttons are in the right place so it's a word of a warning there just in case you might screw up and then see these are on the opposite side Right, so we're going to put the analog in now Before we screw it in, make sure the ribbon cable is in. And that the latch is up so you can feed the ribbon cable inside there.
Now we're going to put a little bit of conductor foam back into here, this side here. Uh, make sure these two screws are tightly screwed in, else you'll have a loose analog stick. Right, I'm going to place the the little minus button. These should only go into one way, so you, you shouldn't be able to mess this up. So it kind of goes in in a bit of a funny angle. Probably easier to put the first screw in so it's locked in place. There we go, <clears throat> let's put the ribbon cable in as well. And now, let's put this L trigger in. And that just slots in perfectly. Give a little click test to make sure it's in properly. And the spring is snug. The screw could be on tighter though. Right, that is fine. Next step, we can now connect the trigger button here. Before we put the rest of it back, we're gonna we'll make sure that's snug, and then put the the sink button and that in as well. Remember, these go in on opposite ends, so just be careful of that.
All right, so we got the rail ribbon cables in and also the trigger button. So let's close this up. Just be careful of this very fragile ribbon cable here. and then put these three screws back in and it's really coming together now like you can see how much a transparent one looks I'm just going to screw in these three um, screws for the battery cover and it's almost complete it's really coming together now like you can see the difference okay so we're almost there we just need to put the battery back in I find it easier to plug it in first and then place it in its spot Once you've got the battery in, now it's time to just close it up. And then screw these four tri-point screws back in. And we have a purple Joy-Con, transparent purple Joy-Con controller. So there's the left Joy-Con done and it's looking pretty fantastic right now. Nice purple grape colour going on. Right, before I start on the other one, just make sure that like this controller is working. Make sure the buttons are functioning before you put everything back. Seems like it's working fine. So let's start on the right now. So same again, we've got four Y screws at the back here. Let's just pop them off. Once you pop the back open, we'll get rid of the battery. Again, that just pops off. Can remove the battery and then next thing let me get rid of this antenna here you can see that it's just connected to the the board that just pops open like that once you've got the battery out you can see there's three screws here which we can remove um, this holds the battery compartment in place and reveals the rest of the motherboard Once you get the screws out, just be careful here because this is at a weird angle and you can see that it's still attached. A little ribbon cable right there. You want to watch out for that. So all you got to do is lift the ribbon latch and then pop it out. So the middle one is out with a trigger button. As you can tell, this is like different to the left side. This should still be the same. So again, like last time, we want to pop these two plastic connections out and then be careful the two springs ok 
and once you pop that out now just replace replace it with your new housing Just like so, and then plop your springs in place. This is too. Oh, okay. The springs were stuck together. kind of messed it up a little bit and then do the same line it up and make sure the two plastic clips are in the middle right back on the Joy-Con again we're going to take off this rail ribbon cable just like the other one they're on the opposite sides the latches on the opposite side so just gonna pop that open and then this is held by a single screw at the top Pop open and then grab your got the little latch button here. And we're gonna just transport this straight onto the replacement housing. So that's on the purple housing now. Next we're going to take off the analog stick here. Just like the other one, there's two screws. Two flips head screws here. I'm just going to unscrew them. Pop the little tab up and remove the ribbon cable. Just like so. Okay, so now the motherboard is exposed, we can get rid of these two screws. And this is a little bit different because it has two more ribbon screws at the bottom here that we need to disconnect. So, it's a little bit difficult to get these out, there's not a lot of room to work with. There we go. Now we can pop the whole motherboard out. Fuck. And there goes the right bumper. So 
So I think one of these ribbon cables is for the infrared and the other one is Oh yeah, one this is for the infrared. I think that just pops out. We'll get rid of the buttons first, so pop the cushion out, pop the buttons out. Let's remove this little bumper thing. I think this is all st stuck on. Whoops. Not too sure what that does. Maybe this is to strengthen the antenna. I'm not too sure. Um, put that to a side. The infrared is stuck on, so you can just peel that off and then grab your home button. And then that's the front shell off. We can grab our new shell, put all the buttons back. Infrared goes slots in like that. It's going to be tricky to plug all of this in, that's for sure. I put all the buttons in place with the cushions and I made sure they're um, not upside down and stuff like that. Uh, I was going to put this on but I'm going to leave this out and what I'm going to do to make life a little bit easier is I'm going to connect these up to the motherboard, the infrared and then that little plasticky thing, well, what, this thing here, this frame of some sort. Oh, maybe it's like a heat sink thing, maybe to cool it down, I don't know. If anyone knows, please let me know what that is. But let's go ahead and connect these up. Alright, it's all connected up as you can see. Um, let's try and put this back together. It's all a bit dangly I think I might have put this on the wrong way so. Okay, so what I did is I put the infrared first and line this frame back into place so it sits snug. Fold the motherboard and then place the rumble back in. So it all should just sit snug there. I can see a screw. The screw should not be there. Right, so that's all in now. I'm going to put these two screws in. To secure this in place. Actually, put the R button in first.
you put these screws in, make sure they're not too tight, else um, these might not press in. So you're going to have to find a nice balance between how tight and how loose these screws are before um, closing this hole. I think I might have done it too tight. Right, next I'm going to put the joystick back on. Now I'm going to uh, connect the ribbon cables for the rail back cover. And this keeps falling out so I'm going to have to try to just be aware of this your R button will just pop out when you do this. You might want to leave this till last. You're going to put in this now, the trigger button. Okay, I managed to put the middle frame back in and the trigger button. Um, this was very tricky you had to angle it because you didn't have much room to work with but these popped out several times and just be aware of that now next we're just gonna put all these screws in to lock everything in place Ok the screws are back on and now I've put the antenna in place, We're almost there, this is pretty much complete now, just need to put the battery in, which can be tricky, but battery is now on and now I'm just going to tuck this wireless cable in its little groove there. just so the cables are secured, locked in place. Right, we can flip the cover back now. Make sure your buttons are clicking before you screw everything back in. Seems fine. And then lastly, you just have to put the four Y screws at the back of the case. And there we go, that is the right Joy Con done. So here's the final product. This took about over an hour to do. Um, I would set yourself about, about that time to replace these but I like the transparent look to it you can see all the little pieces that go together that make these Joy-Cons which is a neat feature um, so yeah the purple drank grape juice colour is in full effect and it kind of goes well with just the standard black um, screen so maybe I don't need to change the housing of that so there you go guys that is how to replace a Joy-Con housing and tear apart. So 
hope this tutorial has been useful for you guys and I may be doing more of these getting some uh, different joy cons and different housing to mess around with so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again on another video